Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to the virtual event series. I'm Angelo, and I'll be your host for today. I'm a senior interactive media specialist here at Netgear. So essentially, I manage the, the Netgear YouTube channel, the Night Harper Gaming Twitch channel. And really, if you have followed any of our social accounts, there's probably a chance that I had my hand on it at some point. Uh, but before I go ahead and introduce this uh, new event series, I'll go ahead and pass it off to the team here. Uh, Balave, I'm going to pass it off to you. I think this is actually the first time that you've been on our show. Um, how are you doing? Yeah, doing pretty good. Uh, again, my name is Ravindra Blave. Uh, I'm uh, Director of Product Management at Netgear. Uh, and I manage uh, the Fi6 systems, uh, RB uh, especially. Uh, and we'll be talking about a couple of new uh, RB systems today. I'm pretty excited uh, to be here today. Awesome. Dustin, you're next. You've been here. <laughs> yep. How's it going, everyone? Uh, it's Dustin once again. Um, you guys might have seen me in uh, last week's Wi-Fi 6 uh, virtual event series here. So, um, again, for those of you who are not familiar with who I am, I'm a brand experience manager for Netgear's Connected Home Products. Uh, so I'm, I'm responsible for a lot of the content that you do see across our uh, social channels, community forums, as well as our blogs. So, uh, again, happy happy to be here uh, once again. Uh, join you here, Angelo and, and Beloved. Cool. Yeah, let's go ahead and do it. Um, I wanted to shout out a couple of people in the chat. So thank you, everyone, for joining. Again, this is a live interactive show. So if you have any questions whatsoever about uh, what we're going to be diving in today, which will be Orby Wi-Fi 6, um, please feel free to drop a comment in anytime you have us from 12 p.m. Pacific time to 1 p.m. Pacific time. Um, so please go ahead and drop your questions. I see uh, John Paul Bacon here says, hi, Timothy Gage. This thing is working now. Uh, <laughs> we appreciate your patience here. We'd love to kind of, we want to get people kind of coming in um, for, for a couple more minutes before we start. So we appreciate that patience. Uh, Gareth is tuning in from the UK. Hello, we're here in California. Um, we're usually worldwide. So really, really cool to see where everyone's from. Uh, Ricky, also in California. Yes, it is noon. This is our lunch, <laughs> our lunchtime streams. But we do this every Tuesday. So, um, you know, good, good to see you here. Um, and Shady Joker, our regular from the tech support streams, what is up? Thank you. Uh, we always love the positivity here. Um, and we love being able to engage with our communities. So thank you. Thank you for everyone for joining. So um, actually, before I introduce the, the virtual event series, uh, let's talk about Orbi Wi-Fi 6. So this is going to be the main meat of what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, this is our flagship Orbi, um, or at least the... Uh, this is our newer Orbi that supports the Wi-Fi 6 standard, which is pretty exciting stuff here. So, so Pallave, uh, to anyone who is new to the show or may not know much about Orbi or Orbi Wi-Fi 6, um, can you go ahead and kind of give a little intro? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, so I think uh, the first thing is uh, what is Wi-Fi 6, right? So Wi-Fi 6 is, uh, is a new uh, Wi-Fi standard. Uh, again, uh, so if you look at... Uh, uh, the Wi-Fi standard itself, we moved from 11N to 11AC. Uh, and again, for those of you who remember, that happened uh, a while ago. Uh, but again, uh, in terms of the technology itself, it is changing much faster. Uh, and uh, Wi-Fi 11AC is being replaced by uh, 11AX, which is also called Wi-Fi 6. And really what it is, is it's a new uh, technology to uh, to support a more number of devices, right? So over the last uh, few years, uh, people have more and more uh, Wi-Fi devices within the home. Uh, you pretty much uh, a typical household, uh, everyone has a cell phone, a laptop, uh, maybe you have smart speakers, you have uh, cameras, uh, you probably have uh, TVs uh, streaming or Wi-Fi as well. So if you look at uh, the number of devices uh, within the household that are connecting on Wi-Fi has, has grown really. It's, it's, it's pretty common nowadays to have like uh, 40, 50 devices within your house. And uh, the 11 AC Wi-Fi standard was really not designed for this huge number of devices within the home. Not just a uh, number of devices, right? Uh, the type of bandwidth needed for each of them is different. For example, if you're streaming a 4K TV, you need a lot of high, high bandwidth. But at the same time, if you have like a video camera or a doorbell, uh, they don't require a lot of bandwidth. Uh, nonetheless, they're connected over Wi-Fi. 
So problem with lemon AC is really it doesn't fare well when you have combination of uh, different kind of devices, devices that need high throughput, devices that need low latency, and that's where uh, 11AX, the Wi-Fi 6 standard, has come about. And really, if you have a router uh, which is uh, more than two, three year old, it's it's very likely that you are on uh, on 11 AC. And not just routers, uh, talking about the client devices, uh, which are on Wi-Fi 6, that's growing as well. Just last year, we just had uh, iPhone 11, uh, which came with uh, Wi-Fi 6. And fast forward a year, uh, now we have Samsung devices, we have Samsung TVs, we have tons of laptops, all of them supporting Wi-Fi 6. So really, uh, if you are buying any of these new, new devices, the only way to really take advantage of those features is really upgrading your router to Wi-Fi 6 as well. And really, it, it's not just because it's, uh, it's a new router, it's really because it is addressing the problem that you might be having in your house because of a lot more devices uh, than you had before, uh, and also because of bandwidth-hungry devices that you have now, uh, things like uh, you know, wireless TV, etc. And that's what requires uh, Wi-Fi 6. And really now, more than ever before, right? Now, pretty much everybody is working from home. Uh, I'm sitting at home uh, doing this uh, live event. I'm sure a lot of you are working from home. Uh, and uh, you need a pretty robust uh, Wi-Fi router, uh, which can which can allow you uh, to do your office work without any interruption. At the same time, being able to uh, consume all the data for entertainment. Maybe uh, you have to folks, brothers, sisters, or kids who are uh, playing video games, etc. Uh, so this is the right environment where you will really see that your 11 AC Wi-Fi router may be already faulting. You might be seeing lag, you might be seeing that video is freezing at times. Uh, so all the problems are addressed by uh, by Wi-Fi 6 in terms of the technology itself. Mm -hmm. And Balava, you actually do bring up a good point about, you know, just sort of the, the growing smart home and just, you know, the, the number of devices that are entering our homes, right? Um, sure, they, you know, two, three years ago, our homes might have been uh, more than enough to handle all of those devices. But we, again, a lot of times, and, and we talked about this during um, last week's uh, live stream, you know, we, a lot, a lot of people tend to forget about, you know, their thermostats, their, their smart lighting, their, um, their smart speakers, their security cameras, when, when they think about devices that are connected to Wi-Fi, right? And so, right. More, you know, more times than not, they're thinking, oh, okay, my laptop, my tablet, my phone, um, you know, maybe my streaming devices, my TVs. Um, but again, they don't think about those little, the, the smaller devices that, like you, like you mentioned, they don't take as much bandwidth. Right. But I mean, it, it, it right. Will and, that, right? And the good thing is really about Wi-Fi six is it's fully backward compatible. So let's mm -hmm. say you have thermostat which is eleven AC, uh, your Wi-Fi six router is going to work just fine. Uh, and again, if you have a question that, hey, I have uh, client devices, none of them are uh, Wi-Fi 6, maybe my iPhone is Wi-Fi 6, that's about it. What about 20 other devices which are still on 11 AC? Mm -hmm. Will I benefit from Wi-Fi 6? The answer is absolutely yes. Uh, and the reason for that is really uh, Wi-Fi is it's sort of a shared media, right? So it's all uh, all the data is going over, over wireless within the same environment. So. Uh, all the time, uh, each packet is stepping on the other one, creating congestion, etc. But the moment you have a Wi-Fi 6 router, and let's say you have two new devices which are Wi-Fi 6, right there, uh, you are now getting the benefit of Wi-Fi 6. Not just for those Wi-Fi 6 devices, but because these devices are now talking Wi-Fi 6, they are providing much cleaner environment mm -hmm. to the 11 AC devices that you might have. So it's really benefiting you uh, even your uh, uh, older devices, which are still on 11 AC, would benefit a lot uh, mm -hmm. by having the Wi-Fi 6, uh, Wi-Fi 6 system, really. So that's about Wi-Fi 6, right? And really, if you talk about uh, adding a whole home coverage, right? The whole uh, RB category was introduced by Netgear uh, for providing Wi-Fi throughout the home. 
uh, now you combine Wi-Fi 6 with RB, you get an ultimate uh, Wi-Fi solution for your home where you have uh, the better, uh, better Wi-Fi system within the home, provides you uh, coverage throughout the home, uh, and really is is using uh, the wireless very efficiently so that you, you don't get interruptions, you get a smooth gaming experience, you get very smooth 4K, 8K streaming, all that is possible uh, because of uh, the advancements in technology, uh, which is which is Wi-Fi 6. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, that was a great intro. Thank you, thank you, Bulave, for really taking a deep dive. Um, you know, this is a this is a weekly Tuesday show, and honestly, it's actually really cool to see uh, the depth of uh, knowledge that you guys have as as directors and as product line managers. Um, you guys are really the teams here building the product. Um, so I did want to roll over to the demo that we uh, actually shot at the office. So uh, about a month ish ago. Um, we we shot we shot a couple videos. We did it safely, um, but uh, <laughs> essentially we want to bring the trade show booth to you, and that's what the Necker Virtual Event Series is about. Um, unfortunately, because of a uh, shelter in place, we're not able to go to our conventions as we usually go. Um, that include our trade shows, where uh, essentially you can come up to us. We'll give you a live demo. You can ask whatever questions. Um, that's usually a face to face kind of thing. Instead, instead of buying that trade show uh, ticket. This is free and it goes out to everyone. So please, I did see some comments coming in uh, and I want to be able to address all of them. I, I did see a little bit earlier, uh, we got we got two Texans in the house uh, <laughs> and we got actually a couple questions about Wi-Fi 6E. And again, there's, there's a lot of questions here that I wanna make sure that we have time to address. Um, so please, as we roll the demo videos, uh, continue to uh, roll them in. And then afterward, we're gonna go ahead and answer those questions. So uh, if you guys are ready, we're gonna go ahead and roll that uh, demo video. So check it out. Hello and welcome to our virtual event series. We are so glad you are able to join us. My name is Ravindra Bhlave, uh, Director of Product Management here at Netgear. Today, we are exploring our Wi-Fi 6 mesh systems. Wi-Fi 6 is the next generation wireless standard that provides a huge boost to speed as well as four times the capacity to handle more Wi-Fi devices on the network as compared to Wi-Fi 5, which is also known as 11AC. Wi-Fi 6 combined with the mesh systems provides you with a smoother and more enjoyable wireless experience throughout the hyper-connected home. We created the RB Wi-Fi 6 whole home mesh systems to give you the capacity to enjoy more streaming, more browsing and gaming on more of your devices than ever before. With the easy setup and customization ability, you can use our RB mesh Wi-Fi systems to blanket your whole home with a steady Wi-Fi throughput in every room, eliminating dead zones completely. Two new RB Wi-Fi 6 mesh systems we are introducing are RBK850 and RBK750 series systems. Both RBK850 and 750 are built using tri-band architecture where one 4x4 radio is dedicated for backhaul for connection between the RB nodes. This dedicated backhaul ensures that your Wi-Fi performance does not drop as you add more satellites or more devices within your home. RBK850 series has eight front-facing Wi-Fi 6 streams for connecting to wireless devices. It has 2.5 gigabit ethernet port for connecting to internet, which is ideal for home with gigabit internet speeds with ability to go even higher. Additionally, RBK850 has four ethernet port on router and four port on each satellite for ample wired connections where needed. RBK750 series has four front-facing Wi-Fi 6 streams for connecting wireless devices. It has a gigabit ethernet port for connecting to internet. You can also uh, use two ethernet ports, aggregate them together to get up to two gigabit internet. RBK750 has four ethernet ports on router and two ports on each satellites. 
Both RBK850 and 750 comes in two or three unit packs. If required, additional satellite can be added to increase coverage. Simply place your add-on satellite anywhere in your home to increase your home Wi-Fi coverage. With our RB Mesh Wi-Fi systems, you get cutting edge performance and gigabit speeds where you need them. With multiple Wi-Fi 6 streams, super fast Wi-Fi 6 speed, you can get ultimate experience for 4K streaming, lag-free gaming, and consistent speeds everywhere. We want your entire experience with our RB Mesh Wi-Fi systems to be easy, seamless, and most important of all, enjoyable. That's why we make setting up and managing your RB device simple and easy with the RB app. Our RB app allows you to create a guest network, view connected devices, and perform speed tests right from your phone, hassle-free. Additionally, security is extremely important for us. Therefore, Wi-Fi 6 RB comes integrated with Netgear Armor. With Netgear Armor, you can protect connected devices within your home from internet threats like malware, phishing frauds, and device vulnerabilities. Armor is a subscription service that protects your network, connected devices, and provides you with a peace of mind. If you are interested in learning more about RB Mesh Wi-Fi systems, then check out the links in the description below. Thank you very much for your time, and we are glad you stopped by. Oh. All right, we're back. Well, uh, we hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, again, this is the virtual event. That was our virtual booth. So uh, we wanted to be able to kind of give you guys a deep dive into Orbit Wi-Fi 6. Um, essentially, what we wanted to tell you through our booth but again, uh, this is an interactive show, and I did see some comments uh, from actually the beginning. So I'm going to kind of scroll up, and I'm going to do my best to, to address those. And we do have a lot to talk about on the show. So, um, you know, I want to make sure that we also answer your guys' questions timely, um, but also detailed enough that obviously you guys get your uh, questions answered. Uh, but we got the first two questions were about Wi-Fi 6E. Um, that is something that uh, running the tech support streams on Friday, uh, we've gotten a few questions about. So we got Ula Ganath, who I also recognize from our tech support streams, and PW Lang 63. They're interested in Wi-Fi 6E. So um, this is kind of a question to Balava and Dustin. Um, so what is Wi-Fi 6E, and um, what's the difference between Wi-Fi 6 and 6E, and are we coming out with anything to support that? Okay, uh, so I can take that. So uh, uh, Wi-Fi 6E is a, a new uh, new frequency spectrum, really. Uh, so it is still Wi-Fi 6. Uh, so uh, Wi-Fi, uh, right now, the way we know it today, operates in uh, two frequency bands, right? One is 2.4 gigahertz, uh, other is uh, 5 gigahertz. So when you hear about uh, dual band uh, Wi-Fi, uh, it means one 5 gigahertz band and one 2. 4 gigahertz band, when you hear uh, tri-band from uh, Netgear, uh, it has 2 5 gigahertz band and 1 2.4 gigahertz band. Uh, what 6E is, basically FCC has uh, recently approved 6 gigahertz band uh, for use for uh, Wi-Fi devices. So it's a completely uh, new uh, radio, uh, and the reason for that is uh, it's much cleaner, means over, over time really if you're living in an apartment, uh, you'll see a lot of uh, Wi-Fi routers in the neighborhood. So uh, both 5 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz are extremely congested. Uh, so by opening up 6 gigahertz band, uh, you uh, immediately get a much cleaner, uh, cleaner frequency band, which is not uh, not crowded. Uh, so that is one. And second is uh, it has uh, 6 gigahertz uh, has uh, the band is much wider. So essentially, uh, you can send uh, what is called 160 megahertz band. So within 5 gigahertz, uh, essentially 160 megahertz means it's much packed by right? Uh, so in 5 gigahertz, you rarely get a full 160 megahertz band for yourself. 
because maybe there is interference, so you really cannot get a clean 160 megahertz band for yourself. But in 6 gigahertz, you have many of them. Uh, that essentially means you have a lot of bad pipes, and it's very likely that you'll get one of them uh, for con connecting your uh, your Wi-Fi. Uh, so that's what 6, uh, 6E is. Uh, so in terms of uh, clients, really, what what it means to client devices uh, means if you have, for example, phones, uh, they are already dual band. That means they can connect to 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz. Uh, fast forward, when they start supporting 6E, uh, it can connect to 6 gigahertz uh, as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, for client devices, it's uh, making backward compatible is simple, but for router, it gets really more complex because uh, you now have to. Uh, operate in all three bands because uh, just because you have six gigahertz band doesn't mean that five gigahertz devices, client devices are going away. Uh, so at a minimum, uh, router uh, will have to be a tri-band router. Uh, 6E standard itself is uh, is evolving. Uh, so right now, uh, 6E uh, standard has power limitations uh, in the sense that uh, you cannot transmit high power. What that means is the range will be very limited. Uh, and the reason uh, standard 40 has done that is really because 6 years band is used by other devices today. It's not that it was uh, completely unused. Uh, so they do want to give the incumbents a chance to find alternate solution before uh, they allow uh, things like uh, Wi-Fi routers and clients transmit more power. So standard is evolving. Uh, so uh, Netgear as a company, as, uh, as you know, we are always uh, first to bring uh, innovative technologies uh, to the market. Uh, and 6E is a standard we are currently working. Uh, like I said, uh, it gets complex once you start adding uh, additional radios uh, onto a router hardware, uh, plus uh, what impact uh, the limited power would have uh, to the range. Uh, and performance is something that we are studying. Uh, and at the right time, we'll have products based on that. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, and just while we're on that subject, um, I'm going to be kind of scrolling up and down a little bit on the uh, on the comments. So again, thank you, and we're going to try our best to to answer them um, as much as as much as we can uh, during today's show. Uh, Luganov has a follow up here um, asking: Does six E with six gigahertz with that reduced range as five gigahertz wasn't better than two point four gigahertz in terms of the range? Um, so what would get better bandwidth at what cost on range? So uh, the way 6E uh, six is defined today, it has uh, power. So it will have impact on range. So if you are using 5 gigahertz, it will have a uh, better range. Uh, and of course, 2.4 gigahertz is low throughput, uh, but much longer range. And that uh, is, is to do with really uh, lower uh, the frequency, less it is impacted uh, by the environment, attenuation is less, et cetera. So that's why 2.4 gigahertz can go much farther than 5 gigahertz. Uh, so if you look at 5 to 6, uh, it's a little higher, uh, but it's not the attenuation that will impact your performance. It's, it's just a, a regulatory uh, requirement that you cannot transmit more than certain power uh, that would limit your, your range. Mm -hmm. So as of now, as of today, uh, 5 gigahertz will give you a better range than 6 gigahertz, of course. Uh, but as the standard evolves, that difference should uh, should uh, should get uh, less and less. And uh, if you are really using uh, 160 megahertz, uh, which is more likely you get on 6 gigahertz, 6 e, in, uh, rather than on uh, 5 gigahertz, uh, so you will get uh, better throughput uh, if you can get the 160 megahertz. So overall, uh, right now 6 e will have limited range, but those problems issues will be addressed as the standard evolves. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool. Um, awesome. Well, thank you for answering everything about 6E. Um, I'm going to go ahead and kind of scroll back up. Before I start scrolling back up, actually, I did get uh, a comment here, I think from, uh, where did it come from? Jared. Balave crushed it. So <laughs> if, you're, if you're looking at the chat, uh, you, you got a fan here. So thank you again. It's your first time. But um, again, crushing it. So uh, thank you for all these detailed answers. Um, again, there's a lot here. So there, there's a couple things here I did want to address, and I think we could all, so we do also a Friday tech support live show um, where you actually have us for, for two hours from 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, we'll probably be able to touch on a couple of these questions, but if you want 
more specific help where we're gonna be a little bit more hands-on we have a little bit more one-on-one time uh please tune into our friday shows but i'm gonna touch on this so this one we got a couple commenters um asking for availability so we have bat tech who's asking um why isn't orbi wi-fi 6 available in canada yet and i think we have one coming in from kevin um and i think this one is uh he had an orbi wi-fi 6 on back order for a little bit and I just want to make sure that, um, you know, we could address those and, you know, make sure that, um, you know, give a little bit more insight on as to the availability of the products. Because obviously this, it's a really cool product, but we also want to make sure that you could buy it at uh, whichever retailer you prefer. Yeah. So I think in terms of availability, really because of uh, COVID situation, because of uh, people working from home, uh, the demand has gone through the roof, uh, really. Uh, and... Uh, Anything that we can produce uh, gets sold uh, within within days. And that's the reason, really, uh, you probably have to wait a little longer. But uh, on a positive note, really, uh, seeing the surge, uh, we have increased our manufacturing capacity, uh, and a lot more uh, devices will be coming into the channels pretty soon. Uh, so we do uh, certify the products and launch the products uh, into Canada. Uh, so the RBK uh, 750s and 850s uh, would be available in Canada as well. In terms of timelines, uh, I would think uh, around September, October uh, time frame is when it could be available in Canada. It does take a little longer to certify uh, for Canada regulations and getting it available into those channels. Uh, but uh, I would think by September, October time frame, they should be available. Awesome. Cool. Well, thank you for uh, that information. Because um, again, this is a this is a show where uh, you really sometimes you can't find this stuff online. So we appreciate you guys tuning in um, and answering the questions, or sorry, asking your questions. Uh, one from Kevin. Why not jump ahead and release Wi-Fi Seven now? Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna touch on this one pretty quickly, but it's the IEEE. They developed the st- as far as I know, unless you guys correct me. They developed the standards. We developed the products, and then yeah. everyone like your client devices, like your phone, then they come out and support that standard. So that's a question for the IEEE. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah I think that's absolutely right. It, it will take a, a while, I think. Uh, we'll see that next couple of years, uh, Wi-Fi 6 and 6E uh, will dominate. Uh, and again, those uh, would be most of the performance requirements and a number of devices, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, So uh, really it's, it's like chicken and egg, right? Uh, when you have a demand which breaks the current standard, that's when you need a new standard. At the same time, you need a better standard to grow. Uh, so I think Wi-Fi 6, uh, 6E uh, has ample capacity to meet today's end. Uh, I would say for the next two to three years mm-hmm. requirements. Awesome. Yeah. It'll definitely be around for, for quite a while. I mean, the transition from yeah. AC to, to AX, it was, mm-hmm. you know, it was definitely a few years. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure it'll be a, a whole lot better than, <laughs> than, than six, right, eventually. So yeah. it'll get there. And like, like Angela said, right, the first is the uh, standard body works on it. So I quickly, and after that, uh, the tech vendors have to... Uh, develop uh, chips based on that standard, they have to test it in the lab. So overall, uh, it, it's, a, it's a long cycle uh, to bring the silicon and uh, make it mature so that it, uh, it has to be backward compatible, etc. Uh, so that cycle itself is typically, uh, I would say, about a year and a half to two years. Uh, so mm-hmm. putting it all together, uh, Wi-Fi 7 getting mature, uh, silicon vendors having the right uh, parts for it, uh, and then uh, system vendors like Netgear coming out with product for it. It's at least three years away. Mm-hmm. Awesome, but you guys are in the right space. Uh, again, we're the we're the leader in Wi-Fi six. Um, so really, we're just in the beginning of this journey. So you know, uh, there's gonna be some pretty cool stuff that we're gonna come out before we even get to Wi-Fi seven. Um, all right, so this um, this one we could probably address a little bit more in the tech support streams, but uh, again, I just want to make sure that y'all are being heard. So we got one from RMA. Um, I use an AT&T Nighthawk MR1100 hotspot, uh, which is a great choice, and they uh, they just bought an Orbi RBK 753S. Will it work okay with the Nighthawk hotspot, or will I be able to get my AT&T service just using the Orbi system? 
Uh, no. So again, uh, so if you have uh, MR1100, you are using it uh, for your cellular internet connection. Uh, so that's how you are getting internet. Uh, so RB, RBK750, 850, the two products we have launched, uh, they are basically routers. Uh, they are Wi-Fi systems. Uh, they require uh, a sort of internet modem. Let's say if you have cable, it does require a cable modem. If you have cellular internet, it does require you to have uh, a cellular uh, modem. Uh, MR1100 would work fine because it will connect to LTE. Uh, you would have to essentially connect all the uh, on an Ethernet port of MR1100. So that way you can combine uh, RB with MR1100. RB can give you the complete uh, Wi Fi coverage within the home, and MR1100 can be used as a modem for connecting to cellular internet. Mm -hmm. You can combine the two uh, to get uh, best Wi Fi coverage. Uh, and your internet from AT&T. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. Um, sorry, I did miss actually miss one a little bit from from Doberman a little bit higher up. Uh, so they're interested in Orbi Wi-Fi six, um, but they're saying that the the early or sorry when I read the reviews they're a little bit mixed. Uh, were these early problems and how do I set <laughs> how do I sort out real tech issues with the system versus user idiocy? Idiocy. Did I say that right? Um, so I guess they're just kind of looking at, hey, you know, what are we doing on the um, the support side of the system, um, firmware releases, um, you yeah. know, is everything ironed out? So I think, right, uh, one thing is, uh, with, as with any technology, right, uh, uh, initial, uh, when we launched uh, uh, RBK 850, uh, we did have some issues, interop issues with clients, and a lot of them had to do with... Uh, the client software uh, wasn't really, though Wi-Fi 6 is backward compatible, uh, sometimes you do need to upgrade the firmware on your client devices for it to work properly. Uh, so those are the kind of cases where we had seen where uh, 11 AC client devices needed a firmware upgrade to work with Wi-Fi 6. Uh, and those issues were really uh, way early on, I would say almost last October, November, December timeframe. Uh, since then, uh, we don't see those type of complaints uh, uh, anymore. Uh, and we work with a lot of uh, client devices. Before even we launch our product, uh, we uh, we test with every possible uh, client device that is uh, that is out there, both in our lab. Uh, plus, I think some of you might be familiar with our beta testing, uh, where uh, any one of you can join uh, our beta testing. Uh, where we make sure that products are tested well. Uh, so those initial interop issues uh, have been sorted out. I would say uh, Wi-Fi 6 is pretty mature now, uh, and you'll not find those interop issues. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And uh, so I did see another comment from RMA. Um, he was talking about those disconnects, and hopefully we're able to answer your question there as well. Um, just saying, hey, you know, we should be ironing out. Just make sure that you're updated on both your client side and on the router side um, to the newest firmware. And again, if you we, we want to be able to kind of address Orbi Wi-Fi 6 specific questions here, um, but for tech support stuff, um, we want to be, <laughs> we want to make sure that you, you guys are running smoothly. Um, no one wants to be running into issues on your network. So I highly encourage you, if you have any more follow-up questions, check it out on our Friday show, uh, where you're going to have a panel of four of us um, being able to help you out with any network connectivity issues you might have, um, and hopefully we'll be uh, get you guys covered there. All right. Sorry, there's so many questions here. I hope you guys are, are good on time. Uh, I know we still have uh, more that we want to show, but uh, I'm going to kind of start going through these a little bit quickly. Um, all right. Hold on. Just want to keep going down. Keep going down. Oh, An Angelo, there was a pretty pretty good one there from Kevin, Kevin. Um, that I think that maybe maybe we can address on mm -hmm. here. Um, he, he was asking about the difference between the you know RBK and the RBS and oh, awesome yeah you know we, we mentioned that the RBK is is the is the kit right whether it's a two pack or a three pack and then the RBS is the satellite so um, yeah I mean just just to kind of clarify that because um, you know you, you may see that if you're shopping on the Netgear store uh, seeing RBS and an RBK or even an RBR which is the router itself. So just mm -hmm. just being able to I think distinguish that, um, it it'd be good to just kind of help, help 
clear it up to uh, any any potential, uh, you know, or be uh, or be customers here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I did see that comment. So um, yeah. they're looking for. Do we have a, a chart that explains all the differences between the Orbi products? Um, unless I'm mistaken, I th- actually think we do. Um, let me go ahead and actually check that out for you. Um, Dustin, I'm not sure if you. Uh, I know you guys are working on actually a lot of the web stuff, but I want to make. Uh, I want to make sure that you know. Um, we have. I think we have. Um, uh, this pretty cool. Okay, here. So I'm gonna kind of flip it over. Just I know you guys are been seeing our faces for so long, um, <laughs> but I encourage you to, guys to check out the Orbi site. And also, uh, this is the show where we want to tell you all about Orbi Wi-Fi Six and also the difference um, between all of our products. But we have. Um, we have something here called Find My Orby. Uh, check it out, necker.com slash Orby slash Find My Orby. And you could actually go through this kind of selector. Um, and it'll take you through a few different pages. And it's going to recommend you the best Orby for you. Um, I know there's a lot of options. I know there's a lot of things to think about between if you want Wi-Fi 6 or do you want RBK, uh, or RBK 50. Or do you want some of these, I guess, uh, I guess if you don't want to go all in for Wi-Fi 6... You know, we still have some lower spec choices for you, um, but highly encourage you to compare and contrast. Um, I think this is probably your best bet to start comparing the Orbi systems. And also, while we're on here, uh, we did get another question uh, coming in here from Eric. Um, uh, specifically, he's looking for the best solution for him. So he's comparing the Nighthawk mesh router, and he has a 2,500 square foot home. He needs a solution uh, to have Wi-Fi upstairs and in the basement, and it needs to be Wi-Fi 6. Um, is Orbi Wi-Fi 6 the right product for Eric? Yeah. So I think uh, that's a common problem. It's typically, people have a router, and uh, depending on where you are getting your internet, right? So sometimes it's at one end of the house. Maybe you don't have a very large house, but your internet connection is coming to the basement. Not the right place to keep a router uh, because you're not going to get the coverage. With RB, uh, you are keeping the router uh, closer to your internet connection modem. Uh, and uh, RB has what is uh, what we call a dedicated backhaul. Uh, and I think that is uh, unique. Essentially, what it is, is uh, it is a, a dedicated radio. It's a tri-band, RB's tri-band. And one of the 5 gigahertz band is dedicated for the backhaul. So you can keep router in the basement, for example, uh, and then you can keep uh, one of the satellite in a more central location. Router and satellite will be talking to each other through a dedicated backhaul. So it's virtually like a Ethernet uh, wire, but just that it's a hassle-free, it's wireless. You can place wherever you want satellite. Uh, and using that dedicated backhaul, you are going to get, let's say you have uh, 200 Mbps internet, even a gigabit internet speed coming uh, to your basement. Um, the dedicated backhaul will stream that to satellite, and that can then uh, have Wi-Fi uh, coverage uh, to your central location in the house. So RB is definitely uh, designed for solutions like that, for problems like that, uh, where your internet connection is not at a optimal position. It's not in the center of your house. It might be at one end, or it might be at in the basement. Mm-hmm. And that's actually a good point that you bring up, Balave, about the you know the third band that's the dedicated uh, backhaul because again that's that really is what sort of separates Orbi from um, not just Nighthawk mesh but you know some of the other mesh systems that are out there, right? With that dedicated backhaul, you're then able to you know take those you know faster those speeds that you're getting from your internet um, to take them even further out, right? So like like you said, if you're getting you know a gig. Um, that you're paying for um, through your ISP, well, you don't. You no longer have to be as close to the router as possible. You know, you can be in the back room and get you know close to those speeds, right? It, it'll the the backhaul is right. going to help extend those as far as possible. Mm-hmm. Right. And another reason for having dedicated backhaul is uh, is as you add more and more devices, especially in the Wi-Fi systems, uh, if you don't have a dedicated backhaul, essentially. Uh, the communication between two nodes uh, is is the same wireless band that is shared by your client devices as well. So what happens if you add really uh, additional devices, uh, the communication, the channel uh, that is used for talking between the two systems gets uh, overloaded. And you'll 
see the performance overall go down uh, with the dedicated backhaul that that doesn't happen it essentially means that you have a dedicated highway for all the heavy traffic between uh, between these two systems themselves so they are not stealing uh, bandwidth from what you should be getting to connect to your client device with a shared backhaul that that's what happens mm-hmm. awesome so eric yeah hopefully uh, that was able to clear up any of your I guess questions about the difference between Orbi and Nighthawk. Um, again, the the big benefit of Orbi is having that dedicated backhaul. Um, it's kind of like having that dedicated highway for all that traffic. So whether you're on a satellite or the router, it's going straight, getting the best speeds um, directly from your modem. All right, just a couple more, just a couple more, and then I think uh, we could probably get back um, as to the uh, the talking points that I think we wanted to kind of bring up here on the show. Um, we uh we got one from Richard. He's looking for an RBS forty uh, in the UK. Uh, he's looking for a three satellite in the garage. But either way, I think this is also another availability question. I'm not sure if you have anything to comment on uh, availability for Orbi Wi-Fi six in the UK. Uh, in in UK. Yeah, yeah, that's in the UK. Uh, yeah, I think that. Uh, one is also coming, uh, uh-huh. so uh, it uh, it should be available. Uh, I think by by end of this month. Okay, cool. Yeah. So thank you, thank you guys for for um, asking that, and then you know hopefully we'll be able to um, get you as much updated information as much as possible. Again, um, stay tuned. We do weekly streams uh, for the virtual event series on Tuesdays, two hour streams for Fridays for tech support. Um, we got one from Jared. I have a house full of kids. Could you speak to parental controls and or regulating device access with Orbi Wi-Fi 6? Uh, so uh, with Orbi, uh, we have two uh, uh, two subscription services. One is Armor, uh, and another is Parental Control. Uh, so Parental Control uh, would allow you to basically uh, configure various devices, uh, essentially limit uh, control the access of those devices onto what website they can go to, etc. Uh, it's not available right now. Uh, it's something that is available on the 11 AC RB, uh, but it would be available by uh, by end of the year or early January. So it would be a firmware upgrade. Uh, so it's uh, uh, Netgear Smart Parental Control, uh, which would allow uh, you to regulate uh, your kid's devices. Uh, you would create a profile of your kid, uh, assign all kids' devices to that, and then you can basically select things. This kid is this age group, uh, so uh, all these will automatically uh, filter uh, the website that they can go to. It will allow you uh, to uh, limit uh, in terms of how long you want your kids to access those devices, etc. So all those features are available uh, through uh, Netgear Smart Parental Control. It's a subscription service. Uh, the basic comes free, uh, but for premium features, uh, you have to subscribe to it. And that should be available uh, by end of the year or January uh, on all Wi-Fi 6. Like mm-hmm. I said, it will be a uh, it will be a firmware update. What is supported today is uh, Netgear Armor. Uh, and again, Netgear Armor uh, is essentially providing uh, security to all your connected devices. So it's not just protecting uh, the RB system, but all your connected devices. Let's say you have cameras, you have thermostats, you have doorbells. Uh, all these devices uh, could have security issues, right? You, you, you never know. And uh, these devices often don't have enough processing power uh, to scan every packet, uh, to look for uh, any kind of virus, et cetera. Uh, so RB uh, Armor uh, does that for all these devices. Mm-hmm. So for uh, for any of your uh, connected devices, and that can include your uh, smartphones, your uh, tablets, your uh, laptops, etc. Uh, so uh, Armor is again a, a, a subscription service. Uh, you get a 30 day free free trial. Uh, but uh, beyond that, you have to subscribe to it, uh, and uh, you get. Uh, you get uh, VPN included in that uh, for uh, up to 200 Mbps uh, VPN for each of your client devices, etc. Uh, so Armor is available uh, on RBK 750 and 850 today. Okay, awesome. 
Yep, Jared, so just to follow up on your question, so the firmware upgrade, um, that will be coming soon um, for smart parental controls. Um, that one, I believe, Balave was going to be end of the year, but Naked Armor is supported now. So yes, uh, we will be improving these products as we, um, um, I guess, we continue to support throughout the year. Um, so please, stay tuned. Um, I know that's something that uh, we get a lot of questions for. Woo! All right, hold on, a couple more. Just I know I said that was the last one, but I just want to make sure that hey, you know, everyone gets heard here. Um, keep rolling in. They, they keep, keep rolling, rolling in. in. <laughs> Philip, what is the max number of satellites that is supported on the Orbi uh, for the consumer side, not Orbi Pro? Oh, well, so again, uh, we uh, typically test it for five to six satellites. Uh, again, I have seen. Uh, Households where uh, big households where uh, they are connected twelve satellites also. Uh, so theoretically there is no limit. But what happens is as you add more and more satellites overall, your throughput is gonna uh, start to impact. Uh, but again, if depending on how your house is, right? If you, if you have a big house, but number of devices are, are not uh, that big. Right? Let's say you have. 100 devices, uh, but you just want uh, more satellites to get additional coverage. Yes, that is possible. We can easily connect uh, four to five satellites. Uh, I have seen uh, cases where they're connected a lot more. Mm -hmm. And uh, speaking of which, uh, so I know they mentioned not the pro side, but what it, we got one from DZ saying, what is the Necker business version of a Wi Fi slash router slash access point? like the Nighthawk? Um, I guess there's a couple options here, but um, what would you recommend for uh, a more business-oriented product? You mean like a Orbi Pro? Is yeah. Um, so yeah, this is a show about Orbi Wi-Fi 6. I think um, my first my first thought would be, hey, let's, let's get you uh, suited up for, for Orbi Pro. Um, that is essentially that is the business version of the products that we're talking about here today um but yeah i, I think i could go go ahead and kind of answer this one so um orbi pro that is the business version of orbi um if you check out our our site i believe i want to make sure it's necker.com slash business um but either way we have a, a business uh portion dedicated to the site this is this is a pretty open-ended question um and we do have about 10 minutes left so i'd love to recommend you something for a business environment um just let us know hey you know what are more specific needs that you need or that you have that you need for um an enterprise oriented uh networking product and we'll be happy to recommend you one here if we have enough time today but if not again friday two-hour show um follow up on rma our friday two-hour show there is no need to sign up all you got to do is just, hey, make sure you're subscribed to the Necker YouTube channel, um, and then you're going to get a notification when uh, that link goes out on Fridays. We do that every Friday, 12 p.m. Pacific time to 2 p.m. Pacific time, um, or stay followed on our social accounts. Um, we'll be able to send you a link there. Woo! One more. One more. I know Kevin has been uh, in the chat, uh, and we appreciate um, your level of engagement here. But he's looking for some information on the RBK 850 series and the 750 series, um, just to kind of clear the air here. Um, where can we get more information about that? Or if you could kind of do it in a explain like M5 Sparknotes version, what is the difference between the two, 850 and 750? So, uh, do you have that slide seven, uh, Angelo? Yes. Let me uh, let me pull okay. that up right here. Actually, I think that slide will explain really well. So essentially the difference is uh, number of streams. Uh, RBK850 uh, is four streams dry band. So in all, uh, it has 12 streams. Uh, so uh, four uh, of them are dedicated for the backhaul. And uh, another uh, four streams are five gigahertz for connecting to the client. And 2.4 gigahertz is also four streams connecting to the client. So you have eight client-facing streams and four dedicated backhaul streams. Uh, go to the next slide. Okay. Oh, perfect. There we go. Now we can kind of be able to get a bigger picture here. Um, and I did have one thing. Is the RBK 750 series, is that available on the Nick Your Store? Or um, where, where can you guys 
or where can everyone who's in the chat here looking for information uh, find that product to buy? So Abbey Kit Time 50 is available uh, on uh, Netgear Store. Uh, three pack is available uh, on Netgear Store. Three pack with armor is available in Costco uh, as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, yeah, multiple places where you can get Abbey Kit Time 50. Yeah, so this I think what Angela is uh, sharing explains very well. Uh, so if you look at 750, uh, uh, it has a two by two front facing. Uh, wireless uh, front house. Uh, so for connecting to your clients, uh, you have a two by two plus two by two. Uh, whereas for 852, it is four by four plus four by four. Both of them have a dedicated four by four back house. Uh, and other differences in terms of connecting to your internet. Uh, 850 has a 2.5 gig uh, ethernet. Uh, so essentially, if you have like a fiber where you are getting a gigabit today, and you expect that you will get uh, higher than gigabit. Uh, 2.5 gig Ethernet port is uh, is the one that you want. Uh, RBK 750 uh, has gigabit Ethernet uh, for the van, uh, but you can also aggregate uh, two Ethernet ports. So uh, in all, a router has four ports: one for van and three for LAN. You can take one of the LAN ports, aggregate it together uh, with uh, with the LAN port to get up to two gigabit Ethernet. Mm -hmm. So that's the main difference really between 750 and 850. Uh, Number of uh, front hall streams, uh, that is one. Uh, speed to internet is another. Uh, and a number of port itself is uh, another difference. Uh, 850 has uh, four uh, LAN ports on satellite, uh, whereas 750 has only two LAN ports. So if you have a lot of uh, wired devices, uh, you might want 850 uh, because 850 satellite gives you four uh, Ethernet ports wherever you place the satellite. And really, the reason for us in providing this uh, more Ethernet port is as soon as you put uh, a device on a wired Ethernet port, uh, you obviously uh, are now uh, getting a wired connection. But at the same time, you're offloading all that traffic to a wired connection and thereby uh, making the air cleaner for other wireless devices. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we have seen a lot of people connecting their smart TVs on the Ethernet uh, port on satellite. Uh, so, yeah. So 850 has uh, lots, lots of them. Yeah, awesome. Well, cool. the, the overall yeah. coverage is they're they're both equally right, equal to equal um, between the 852 and the 752, right? So like a two. Right. Back. So co co coverage is about 2,500 square feet uh, per unit. Uh, so if you have two pack, you get 5,000. Uh, but again, as as your number of devices go up. Uh, then you want to look at uh, 850. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's say if you have more than uh, 20 devices, uh, 30, 40 devices, uh, as they go higher, uh, you you want uh, uh, 850 instead of 750. Mm -hmm. So it really depends on uh, on your your situation, right? Like you said, number of devices, um, whatever number of speeds you're paying for through your ISP, um, if you need more connected devices. Yeah, another thing to note is you can always uh, mix for example, you can mix the satellite from 750 with 850. Let's say you, you bought 850, uh, 852 and you want to add on, uh, but you don't need a whole 750, uh, 850 satellite, you can you can connect the 750 satellite to a 850 system. So within Wi-Fi 6 or the systems, uh, the satellites and router uh, are interchangeable or uh, can be mixed. Mm -hmm. Um, so speaking of being able to mix these satellites, uh, we actually did get a question in coming from Allison. So she's asking, um, well, one, I have an Orbi voice. Can I connect my existing Orbi voice to the Wi-Fi 6 Orbi? Or, and or, are you going to do a Wi-Fi 6 Orbi voice satellite? Yeah, so you cannot mix... Uh the 11 ac rb with wi-fi 6 rb uh, unfortunately the standards are very different uh, they don't work uh, together uh, so uh, will we do uh, wi-fi 6 uh, voice rb uh, potentially yes uh, so uh, both in terms of uh, outdoor uh, rb as well as voice rbs uh, we will likely do a wi-fi 6 version as well uh, for that uh, no confirmed dates yet, but yeah, very likely we'll, we'll do that. All right. Wow. Exciting stuff. So thank you. Wow. Um, yeah, a lot of 
you know, again, we want to be able to kind of clear the air and give everyone a little bit more exclusive news just because you guys are joining the show. And again, if you guys are regulars, we're going to shout you out. Um, and speaking of that, we're down to our last three minutes. So everyone who is in the chat, this is your last chance to ask any questions. Uh, actually, last two minutes. Um, so please, we appreciate you guys um, throwing any questions. This was probably the longest Q&A session that we've had uh, for one of these shows. I've been doing this for a couple months now. And it's really great to see uh, a lot of the interest here for, for Orbi and also Orbi Wi-Fi 6. So um, I want to thank everyone again. We got one that just came in from Philip. Can you use the RBS 23 with the RBR 50? It's like another language, so <laughs> excuse uh, excuse um, the acronyms here and the model numbers. Uh, also, follow up: Can you use the RBS 20 with the RBR 50? So satellites with the Orbi router. Yeah. So if, if it is both at 11 AC, then yes. Uh, so uh, it sounded like you're talking about RBR 50 with RBS 20. Uh, yes, both at 11 AC, they would work. Um, but uh, the RBS 50 will not work with uh, 750 or 850 because these are Wi-Fi 6. So just keep in mind that Wi-Fi 6 uh, or these satellites don't work with uh, either a Wi-Fi uh, AC router or vice versa. Uh, the uh, Wi-Fi 6 router will not work with uh, with the 11 AC satellite. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, well, great. Thank you. Thank you for answering these questions. I know we had a whole, like, we had these slides open, like, we were ready to really take a deep dive, but I think uh, being able to answer your guys' question, I think that was something that was a little bit more valuable here. So we appreciate having each and every one of you asking your questions here on the show. Uh, we're down to our last minute, so we're going to kind of start wrapping things up unless there's anything else we want to talk about here. Um, but thank you. Again, we're learning as we go. This is live. This is interactive. Uh, this is something that we do every Tuesday uh, from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. Pacific time. That's the virtual event series. Friday, if again, we, we got a couple questions here um, needing some help with the product. So tech support live is every Friday, 12 p.m. Pacific time to 2 p.m. Pacific time. So that is a two hour show where we're really going to give you guys one on one time to really make sure that you guys um, are happy with your products and you guys got everything set up and good to go. We got one more question from Kevin and then we're going to sign off. Uh, are the satellites compatible with other routers? I think uh, this is Orbi satellites. Yes. So, so, so we do have uh, what is the universal mode. Uh, so essentially you can take a satellite, use it in a extended mode and it could connect with any router. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So for example, uh, if you wanted to connect a Wi-Fi 6 uh, satellite uh, with, with an existing, uh, any of the routers, you would be able to do that. Cool. Or be outdoor, or be voice. Mm -hmm. Yep. Correct. Yep. Those have a uh, universal compatibility. Yeah. And uh, after rain, just to address you, um, parental controls for Wi-Fi six routers. Uh, actually, um, we we mentioned the compatibility for Orbi Wi-Fi six, but um, Balave, would you be able to comment about parental controls across everything Wi-Fi six for Netgear? Uh, so parental control uh, is supported on uh, few uh, Nighthawk Wi-Fi 6 routers, uh, and they're being rolled over to more and more. Uh, top of my head, I don't remember, I think RAX120 might be the one, RAX80, RAX120, mm -hmm. but we'll have to confirm. I think those are the two which has smart parental control today, mm -hmm. uh, and we are rolling out to more of them. Perfect. Yep, that is a high priority for, for Netgear is um, smart parental controls and uh, Netgear armor. So. We're happy to answer all of the questions there. Uh, and again, anything that we weren't able to stress today, uh, please come uh, join us on our Friday show, 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. Pacific time. Same Netgear YouTube channel. Um, I hope you guys subscribe. Uh, that's, that's your best bet as to knowing when these live events are next. And one more thing, I really encourage you guys to give this show a like if you enjoyed it. Uh, YouTube's algorithm is going to be able to see that and be able to push this event out to more eyes. Uh, the more of you guys in the chat uh, that we're able to see, uh, the longer we're going to be able to continue doing the show. So again, we really appreciate all your guys' attendance here. Uh, but otherwise, Balave, Dustin, uh, I want to thank you uh, too for joining me on today's show. And hopefully for we'll, having us. Yeah, and hopefully we'll uh, see you guys soon on the, uh, on the next one. Uh, perfect. Well, thank you everyone again. Uh, we really appreciate it. Send that like, send that subscribe. We'll see you guys next time. It's time. 
to take the next leap in Wi-Fi. Introducing Orbi Wi-Fi 6 from Netgear. Never worry about Wi-Fi again. With the fastest Wi-Fi ever and four times the connection capacity so you can connect more, do more, and stream more simultaneously in true 4K Ultra HD. Enjoy more, period. Fill your home with powerful, reliable Wi-Fi inside and out with faster, stronger, smarter, whole home mesh Wi-Fi system. Easily set up your Wi-Fi with the Orbi app and connect in minutes to the fastest, highest capacity, best Wi-Fi ever. With Wi-Fi this advanced, you're going to want it everywhere. Orbi Wi-Fi 6 from Netgear. The best Wi-Fi everywhere.